Hello, my name is Thomas Ngarajola. I'm the head instructor for Shaolin Self-Defense Centers. The name of the art that we teach is Shaolin Kempo Karate. I'd like to welcome you to our second tape in a series of instructional tapes. This is our yellow belt tape. We'll be going over the set material that's required at this rank for the yellow belt. Let's get started with some of the basic blocking techniques. Thomas, come on out. Okay, one of the first movements that we're going to be working on is called the cross body palm block. Just very simply, not with the fingers, with the edge right in here. So as our attacker comes in with a punch, we just block. As he comes in with a punch, we just block. We can move around a little bit too. Just block, just block, just block, just block. Very important. When you see this here, don't get the fingers. Just block with the edge this way. Again, he punches, and again, cross body palm block or cross palm block. It's a very simple block, and you'll see it come in some of the movements later. The next thing takes off, a lot of the material will take off from the previous tape. The eight point blocking system with the strikes. After number one block, do a front two knuckle. After number two block, front two knuckle. Again, one block, front two knuckle. Two block, front two knuckle. Notice a little bit of twist of the body. I give him going anywhere down his center line. Number three block, back two knuckle. Number four block, back two knuckle. Number four block, back two knuckle, and right in. Number five comes up high, you block, and you twist back to the side. Let's watch that again. Number five, block, to the side. Six, block, to the side. Five, you could also be throwing his arm just out of the way. And six, just throwing his arm out of the way, maybe getting ready for something else. So we have up to now is one, punch, two, punch, three, back to knuckle, four, back to knuckle, five, hammer, six, hammer. Number seven comes in with a punch or a kick. Rising sun fist. Basically, what you're going to be doing is just coming back a little bit and rising up underneath the back. In, right up underneath the chin there. He throws a kick, block, coming up. Be a good setup for something else. He throws a kick, block, coming into here is a good setup. You could also be doing off the rear hand, but we're we'll getting into that at the next orange belt rank. So let's watch number seven off a kick, block, up, block, up. Notice the path. It's not back all the way and out, and it's not just up. It's a little bit of both. Let's do the whole thing at a different angle. Number one, block, punch. Also, watch this. You throw that hand. I can do one there. Doesn't really matter. Two, three. It'll just change the strikes up a little bit. Four, five, body, six, body, seven, punch, eight, punch. Thank you, Thomas. Practice the blocks in the air for proper form. And practice with a body. It's very important to get both in, especially when you're laying your foundation in the early ranks. Practice the blocks. We'll be moving on in a moment. It's some of the hand strikes. A lot of these hand strikes at yellow belt will be takeoffs from the white belt moves. You'll see, especially in the first one, from the white belt sheet was a front two knuckle punch. The yellow belt does a corkscrew punch. It might not look that different right now, but it's a lot left to do with how much the shoulder rotates. So pay close attention while I have my assistant Thomas come out. Thomas, come on up. Okay. The front two knuckle punch right here corkscrew punch. Notice the shoulder goes a little bit extra. In fact, a quick little lesson. A back to knuckle punch goes this way. A thrust punch is half. Front to knuckle is up correct this way. Corkscrew is this way and inverted is this way. Those hand strikes will come later as we get into it. Let's go over the corkscrew punch. From here, just punch and turn extra in and through impact. Punch and go in. See how the shoulder moves in? Ha! Ha! From the other side. 
right in here. My partner's on guard, and just right in. Switch your stance, right from in here. So you can see we're just coming in and corkscrewing in. Notice my shoulder driving. That's the corkscrew punch. The thrust punch from before is just straight out. Notice the shoulder doesn't turn a lot of extra. So from here it turns in. Same contact point. Thrust, front to knuckle, back to knuckle, corkscrew, inverted, all have the same. So thrust punch, anywhere along the center line is fine. Make sure you practice, this is a good drill, just to move around and work on your focus. Next punch is an uppercut, you might be familiar with this, anybody who's had any boxing experience. Back to knuckle, go straight out this way, uppercut comes like it says, up. Same contact point once again. So let's say you had your partner up over, uppercut to the face, or if he was over, uppercut to the body. Other side, from here, coming up. The power goes up, just like the name says. Uppercut. Another one is a chop. Now there's different names in the chops. You'll hear the words shuto, knife hand, sword hand, blade hand, karate chop. Not from here up, from here in this region. Not down here, right in here. Keep all fingers strong, tuck the thumb. There's all different ways to do the chop. Right now, we're going to be doing a straight chop to the collarbone. You could be coming across to the neck, cross this way, downwards, in, sideways. There's so many ways to do it. Make sure you're aiming at good points on your opponent's body, hitting with that correct point with the karate chop. You can also put the different strikes together. The side hammer. From this way at the white belt video, this one stand more frontal to the person. And you can see from my hand here, I'm still in the same spot, but I'm more front and it comes in from this way. Groin or solo bugs. If he was down a lot, you could do it to the temple region. Let's watch that on the other side. From right in here, right here, and right there. It's a side hammer. Next you have a downwards elbow. The exact opposite of the uppercut is the downwards elbow. Very dangerous in this area. Very lethal strike. You're responsible for your movements. So watch what you're doing. Elbowing in here. Elbow here. Doesn't matter how you do it. Watch when I do the elbow. My whole shoulder comes up and everything drops. Watch my knees. Hmm. The whole body just drops. Ha! Right with the elbow. Don't hit. Watch this here. Don't hit with the whole tricep. Try to hit just with the elbow. You can feel the difference, right Thomas? Yep. Okay, next strike. Roundhouse elbow. Same principles as the other elbow. Come in your center. Come around your center. Roundhouse to the jaw area, solar plex area, either arm, moving around your opponent, coming to the back, coming to the front, you can use it as part of a takedown, where he goes down and out. You do that very hard, and the higher videos will be getting that much harder. The main thing is a roundhouse elbow in that way. So we have the thrust, back to knuckle, the rising sun fist, the chops, the downwards elbow, the uppercut, one that's very important is the back fist. Kind of comes in, you don't have to totally chamber it over here, but it just comes in, rises just to your center line, a little bit across, and comes out. When you're sparring a lot, you tend to use the back fist a lot for setting up techniques to come in and do something. So from here, this is different now. It's this point here, back fisting, right to the temple region. It's one of the best spots to do, because if he goes to block, his hands and my hands get in front of his vision, then I can be doing one of my other strikes. Watch it from the other side. Right here, right near like that. You can be spawning you. In and out. Thank you, Thomas. Work all the strikes, practice them in the air, practice them on a partner. Also, I just realized from the uh, hand strikes before, I have to add two more hand strikes. There's a lot of hand strikes in yellow belt. Circular hammer coming to the groin. Maybe you block and you come 
in. Top part of the hand, in there, in there. We could also be doing it as a thrusting motion. But the main concept here is the shoulder moves around. You're fighting, you block, or you sparring, you fake, and you come in. The circle, gain the power and the distance from the circle. Other side, from here, coming around, boom. Many times I put my hands up towards the person's eye, come in, use that as a setup. From here, if I'm in close, kind of wrestle with somebody, hit the jaw up, and come in with the circular hammer strikes. This is a circular thrust, circular hammer. I showed them both together because they're very related. And the other strike is a palm heel strike. Not with the fingers, the palm, the edge. From here, hitting the nose, very dangerous area. If you go to the ribs, you turn your hand this way. If you go to the groin, you put your hand down this way. Once you experience with a partner, you'll feel it, it'll fit better. So from here, your hands are up, and palm heel. This is an added bonus if you go to the side because you can get your fingers into his eyes. Excellent spot to jaw. Notice, don't hit there. It's this first, and then that if you want. But the palm heel is basically just a straight strike. When you go into this, you're going into the tigers. To the ribs, notice it's sidewards. Watch the body and the hips and the shoulder. Everything gets in. Your instructor will be going over and over this with you. Just don't punch from the arm. It's kind of as if you want to close the car door and the door is left a little bit ajar. You put your hand up against it and you move your hip, right? Well, you just deliver a karate strike the same way with a lot more speed. Ha! Be very controlled. I'm hitting Thomas, but I'm barely touching him. And that's the palm heel strike. When you're doing your martial arts, always go with the flow. That's also the whole concept of this tape. Something goes wrong, something's amiss, I like to just go right with the flow with it. As I forgot the hand strike before, I included it in. If you're working a technique and your one block wasn't good enough, put your other block up and add another technique to it. If you hit the guy with two techniques and that, the move required and you feel it's necessary to get a third one in, you put a third one in. The whole concept of Kempo is to go with the flow. Thank you. some time introduce you to two basic kicking techniques at the yellow belt. Let's have Thomas come out. From here, the back kick. Stay underneath your shoulder. Don't let your knee come outside your shoulder. Keep your knee underneath your shoulder and straight out with a back kick motion. You'll notice that the foot, if you want to call some kind of chamber, your ankle comes towards your knee, not all the way up here. Then your hips are going to be too much movement. Right from here, just in and right out. So Thomas comes into position, he's here. Maybe he was grabbing me. We're gonna get some back grabs later. Maybe you did something to break free, and then you, boom. Tom, give me a foot one second, turn around. When you're doing the back kick, it's not with the toes. He pulls his foot back, and he uses his heel, and he drives his heel into my groin, or his heel into my solar plexus. Other foot. Sometimes when you're coming up higher, the foot turns a little bit. That's natural as long as you're following the rule where it's underneath the shoulder. If the foot comes out a little bit, that's all right. If the knee comes out, then you just did a back side kick. It's just a different kick. So from here, right in, hua, or up, hua. If going to the face region, your foot might start to come out a little bit. So the back kick, you can just move around. It's a very strong kick. The next kick is called a back rising heel kick. You're in close like this. Basically, I'm going to try to hit my own gluteus maximus here with the back part of my foot right here. But Thomas is going to be in the way, and he'll get it in the groin. Many times it's used in cooperation with a back kick. So the back rising heel kick, or at least the scorpion kick. Other foot. So you can see without a partner there. Other foot. Okay, we're going to be putting these in uh, some movements later on. And it's a takeoff from the rolling and slap out techniques from the white belt video. All the slap outs and roll techniques that are in the system were included in the white belt so you can work on becoming very 
comfortable with the floor, so we get into the advanced grappling techniques, you feel more comfortable. The front roll from the white belt is going to be expanded upon. We did it from a lower. Some of you already might be doing it from standing up, but now it's a requirement. All of our requirements could be given to you earlier, but no later. That's what the sheets are about. So from here, I'm walking and I fall. Somebody pushes me, and I'm going to do my forward roll just from a walking position. Just like that. I have my assistant Thomas come out, and I'm standing here, and somebody pushes me from the back. <laughs> just like that. So from here, the most important thing when Thomas goes into his roll is that he doesn't hesitate and be strong against me. That's where he's going to lose his balance. In the martial arts, you lose your balance when you try to hold still. Somebody moves you, boom, you just go into a roll. It's very important that way. In fact, now what I'd like to do also is work on the crane balance drill. It's an awareness drill that's on the white belt sheet. From here, what I'd like you to do, Thomas is going to just kind of stand there. And I'm going to be standing like this. And as I bang into him, hands up on guard, he's just going to catch his balance each time. Just like that. See, as he pushes me, if I try to hold my balance, I can lose my balance. If he pushes me, I can't lose my balance. In the Oriental philosophy, you are the center of the universe. So if the center of the universe is here, now it's here. When I try to hold my balance, hold my position, that's why I can lose my balance. So a very good drill to do at Yellow Belt is your partner pushes you, and you just get on guard. He pushes you, and you just get on guard. You're standing here like this, he pushes you, you just get on guard. I'm facing the camera, he pushes me, I just get on guard. Whatever way I push Thomas, he just, he just gets on guard. You can do it with your eyes closed. He'll close his eyes, and I just push him, and he just gets on guard facing me. Maybe I pull him, he just gets on guard. Just to be nice and relaxed. Also, what you can do this from is from a squatting position, like monkey position, and you can add the slap out to it. It's the same drill. Thomas will close his eyes. I might pull him backwards. He'll come back up. I might push him forwards. Maybe I might bang him to the side. Okay, come on up. Whatever you're doing with your partner, just do it slowly. Don't try to surprise your opponent until he gets used to it. Eventually, you should build up to this, where he's down on the floor, monkey position. I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. Okay, come on up. That's important. And the balance drill, where he pushes me, boom. You can also do it where Thomas is just standing there with his eyes closed, and I push him big, and he goes into a roll. Okay, you can do all your techniques that way. Thank you, Thomas. Each drill that we do is designed to help you become more aware of your body. Everything from the pinion all the way to the things that we label awareness drills. Everything in the martial arts is an experience. Something we want you to experience so that you'll be more ready to handle situations as they come up for you. awareness drill I like to work on is called the moving bag drill, one to five count. You might have done this already, now's the time definitely to make sure you understand it and you get a lot of experience with it. Thomas? So what you're going to do, your partner's going to be holding the bag and you're just going to be moving around a little bit. He's not going to be really trying to fake you out and he's going to call out a number between, I don't know what number he's going to call out, he's going to call a number between one and five. Three. One, two, four, three. Whatever he calls out. Now don't do this to your partner, and one, and move the bag out of the way. He can get injured. Later on, that is a drill that we'll be doing later on, where he really is trying to move the bag. But it's going to be moving around with Thomas, not really trying to figure out, just to keep his center moving. One, two, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me throw a sixth one in there. Now, if that happens, that's all right. Better more than less. One of the main attributes of Kempo this might sound a little violent, is sudden, continuous, violent motion until the encounter is over. Don't get scared of that violent motion, but the whole idea of the martial arts is trying to stop somebody from hurting you. It was told to me by one of my Kempo masters many years ago. Sudden, continuous, violent motion until the encounter is over. Think about that. Once you start, you go. If the situation calls not for using the martial arts, then you should be using the rules of the school and your mind to get yourself out of the situation. But once you start, you should really get going. When you get higher in the martial arts, you could use much more techniques that dissolve and use control. 
But if I'm trying to exhibit control on Thomas when he comes at me, I'm putting myself more at risk. This is a very good techniques to use, but when I try to not hurt him while defending myself, it's a little bit more advanced. So in the beginning, it's easier to teach you how to defend yourself by punching and kicking and breaking than by guiding, manipulating, and seizing. Okay, so the drill, we're moving around. Four. One, two, three. You don't have to get too fancy either. Whatever comes up, just don't do this. He calls out a number. Two. Let's say he calls out five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. That's kind of silly. He did the same strike all the time. Try to be varied. One, two, three, four, five. Whatever comes to mind with variation. Thank you, Thomas. That's the key. Variation experience. Good draw like that. You go for two minutes, and you get your bag, your partner, he goes for two minutes. Excellent cardiovascular and real good awareness. The moving bag drill. Practice it. Work on with you today is something called two pinion. Pinions represent the Okinawan heritage of our system. It's a form. Pinion has many different uh, meanings. The best one given to me by one of my Kempo masters in the past was attainment of physical purity through diligent physical exercise or peace of mind through physical exercise. Number two pinion has an eye pattern to it. I'm going to do it slowly and talk my way through for you. Front position. Whenever you come to front position, you should breathe in. All the rules from one pinion in the white belt tape hold true to this. Don't go over your eyes. Exhale, watch my knees. Knees, hands, and breath in focus. All together. General awareness. Not looking at any particular spot. General awareness. You sense something, you hear something, you feel something. You turn your head, you go to a cat stance. Go to a half moon stance with a block. Notice this foot came around. It was not pointing this way. My weight has to come around. Thrust punch, watch the knees bend. Turn, block, thrust punch. Exhale. <sighs> when your instructors work with you, don't try to learn the whole tape. Use this as a reinforcement. Don't jump ahead of your instructor. Front to knuckle punch. Watch my knees. They bend. I bend down and I go a little bit forward. So from here, front to knuckle. Notice the other hand is on guard. I do it again. Watch the timing here. That's that hammer strike. All the strikes come into play. Block, back to knuckle. Block, back to knuckle. Block. You'll see me again from a different position. High block, number five. High block, number six. Thrust punch, back to knuckle. Six block, five block. Thrust punch, back to knuckle. Five block, six block. Thrust punch, back to knuckle. Turn block, block. There's the corkscrew. Also looks like the movements in the eight point blocking with the counters. Number two block, corkscrew, and done. A lot of people ask me, what's the significance of three in a lot of katas and pinyons? Um, as you get higher, your instructor will talk about timing and different things of that nature, and the, three, the number three in timing has a lot to do with a lot of different techniques that we use. Let's do two pinion again. This time I will face backwards. Follow along. Front to knuckle, hammer. Front to knuckle, hammer. Front to knuckle, hammer. Block. Back to knuckle. Block. Ha! That's why you deliver these strikes. Ha! Ha! Here we go. High block. High block. Thrust. Back to knuckle. High block. High block. Thrust. Back to knuckle. High block. High block. Thrust. Back to knuckle. Turn block. Block. 
corkscrew, lock, boom, corkscrew. Now I'd like to have my assistant Thomas come out so they can show you some of the application of these techniques. Very importantly, depending on how you look at this, it could be a block and a thrust punch or a blocking of a hand. It doesn't matter how you look at your forms. Your instructor will give you so many visualizations, you'll ask him which is the best one, the one you feel comfortable with. So from here you block, boom, you come in with a thrust punch. Whether it's solo plex or groin, that's up to you. And the other side is the same thing. You're blocking, coming in. Let's say you throw this foot. I could be coming into the lower area of the back or to the side there. The next technique is a front knuckle to the face and a hammer. Or a front knuckle to the solar plexus and a hammer. It doesn't matter how you do that. A lot of times you might block this and then you fake out. From here he blocks. See how it whips? Just like water. That's the significance of the water that we have in the background. I chose that for a reason. Remember, everything in Kempo flows. He blocks. Then you'd come in and do the rest of your movement. Okay, from here, the next technique was the back two knuckle in the form. He kicks or punches low. Now let's say if he punched higher. You know, you might have to change the block. The form is just a set way to practice when you're alone. You can practice your forms on a heavy bag. You can practice your form breaking boards. You can practice your form going back and forth with your partner 10 times each. He throws a kick. That's one rep. Two. And you go three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then your partner goes, getting a really good workout. Same technique on the other side. You block. Back to the knuckle. If you kicked with this foot, you'd block. See how I turn with my block? I come into the back. Always be very careful. When you bow to your partner, you are saying, I will not hurt you. You will not hurt me. If it happens, it happened by accident. Very important. Nobody came here to get hurt. Next technique, he throws a high punch, high block. He throws another one, high block, thrust punch, back to knuckle. See that from the other side? He comes in. High block, high block, thrust, back to knuckle. There's so many variations here. You could also be doing it where your blocks kind of are more fading and you work that way. Or you can have it where I just showed you where your blocks are more driving. You can do it, for instance, this way, where you block, watch my hands, see how I locked on? And my other block become a snap to the elbow. Punch, drive. There's so many ways. Another way you can do it? Show you, and your instructor will show you several more. You might even come up with some more on your own. You block, you come into his solar plex area, you hit him, his chin comes down, hit him up, thrust, back to knuckle. So many different applications. A lot of times you'll feel forms are suffocating and restricting. If you work them properly, like I said, on the bag, on a partner, on boards, in the air, all different ways you'll find the actual, I don't want to say secrets, but a lot of different movements. A lot of different quote-unquote secrets that are there. And the last maneuver, you block, he throws another punch, you block, and you corkscrew. The whole idea of the corkscrew is to get more shoulder. From the other side, you block, block, boom, corkscrew. Thank you, Thomas. When doing this, there's so many different applications. Don't try to get every one I showed right now. Do one, get very comfortable with it, move on to another one. Your instructor will be giving you many different ways to do it. So instance, you can do the form fast in one spot, slow in another. It all depends on what your focus is at that moment. Number two, pinion. Practice it well. Today are the combinations. Combinations are little pieces of forms. Your instructor, when he gives you different history during different lessons, You'll see how the whole thing fits in, but combinations are little tiny pieces of forms. Thomas, come on out. Let's work on combination two. When he punches in for me, go. This is not reality. All combination designed to do is teach me how to hit and what to hit and body leveraging, like if I'm flipping or something of that nature. We're not doing ultimate fighting reality. When you were younger and you learned how to add and subtract fractions, you did it by common denominator. This is a common denominator, so you can analyze all your movements from a set point. Don't worry about getting into full-fledged fighting. A lot of people say, well, when I'm doing this move, I feel like I'm too close to this. Well, you could have been blocking that hand to start out with. 
So let's do it step by step. Remember, this is just to get the dictionary of movement of physical knowledge and leverage into your head. I block with a three block. Come in, back to knuckle when I'm doing combination two. Slide in, elbow to the solar plexus. Grab his leg, he falls, hold his leg up, and chop. Let's do the movement again. Now I'll get technical with you. You can learn from these, but it's better to have your instructor introduce them to you, and this is as a reminder. When I do number three block, watch how a little weight goes onto his front foot. So I come in a slightly downward fashion. As his head was moving in, opposing forces, the back two knuckle. When his head is back, his stomach is wide open. That's when I do my elbow. Now if I would just, I'll get into that in a minute. From here, grab his leg, pull this way towards me a little bit, and up towards the trees. Hold here, see this knee? Pin it, downwards. Other hand here in case he kicks. Kick, Thomas. And then chop. Huh. Watch it again. From here, he punches. Block, punch, elbow, sweep, and chop. When you're doing these techniques, you can also do them against the other hand. During most of the video, I'll be showing this one side for instructional purposes. Now, when you're fighting with somebody, he very simply can just throw a punch. Doesn't matter. Like that, because that was a fight right there for one second. And just use it simple. You could be getting grabbed from in here and just elbow. You could have punched him in the face in a fight. Now his head's back. You elbowed him there. He could have been trying to put you into a side headlock. And you punched your way out. And you grabbed his leg up and out and got out that way. That's called the arm sweeping leg technique. From here, right in. So you're wrestling with somebody here, you were fighting, and you went to do something, all of a sudden he got a hold of you. You might just come down and grab his leg. And you see, Thomas hit the floor a little bit hard that time. He had a good slap out. You can actually injure somebody and use the hitting of the floor as a strike. Many times in our art, we say, bring your opponent into the floor, through the floor, not just to the floor. And this is the arm sweeping leg technique, okay? Combination number three uses that cross body palm block we talked about earlier. Don't just stay up here, let it ride up. Cross punch right here. His head comes down, back to your knuckle, grab the shoulder or the neck, push and pull, bang, takedown, front to your knuckle. Let's do it from a different angle. You block, watch his weight as he comes in. My punch runs into him. His body is now going down. So the takedown actually has started by the mere fact of me getting to the outside. He's rotating. I block. He's going down more. I won't even let his head come that far. As his head comes down, I'll hit him in the temple region, getting his head to snap and turn. His upper body will be still coming. Now from here, this hip pushes this way, and this hip pulls this way. Arms are merely just the claws that hook onto him. Turn him. I prefer the neck. Take the edge of your palm, put it here, grab here, turn, boom, punch. Many times the instructor might show you, put him on the floor, then punch. But in reality, as you do the technique, as he's falling, boom. See how his head will ricochet off the floor. But once you got the control, you should practice that. So combination three, again, you block, in, ha, ha. Look around when you get done. Thank you, Thomas. Actually, hold on, one more thing. When you're doing these techniques, we've showed before different techniques, sweeps and takedowns in each sheet. I isolated the sweeps and takedowns because I wanted you to draw and really get the essence of each move. When you're doing combination three, there's a thing they call the shoulder twisting. Let's say you're wrestling with somebody and you're in here like this, you're giving them knees, he's punching you. Whenever you can get this shoulder, turn this way, this shoulder over this foot, you have a takedown. So, the shoulder twisting is something that's very important. You're in here, you're fighting, and you're kneeing, and if you can get his shoulders to twist, you can win. There's many different ways to do it. You can do it coming down this way, and with the shoulders to twist, and you get a wrestling technique out of it. You get a pin. There's all different ways. Thank you, Thomas. There's all different ways to do it. The shoulder twisting, 
the arm sweeping the leg. That's not the only knowledge in combination two, but it is something that I did want to point out to you. That's why we, we highlight a little extra on the requirement sheet. Practice combination two and three. Work them well, work them on a bag. Do the strikes on boards. Practice on a partner, righty, lefty. Give all different drills the instructor gives you. Practice them. Work on Kempo techniques. Kempo techniques are concepts and ideas pulled from the forms and combinations. The instructor gives you a much more detailed explanation as he's giving you the techniques, perhaps during class, during stretching, things of that nature. The Kempos are little tiny concepts from forms and combinations delivered to us through a long line of Shaolin Kempo karate masters. Thomas, come on out. Remember, Kempo is to go with the flow. So you can go with the flow with these. In fact, many times when I'm doing belt exams, I'll ask students to alter and add something to these movements. Okay, your instructor might be changing them according to your strengths and weaknesses and your body sizes. The technique, first one is called dropping elbow. The names are designed just to help you. From here, you block. Now, if you happen to punch high, you do more of a high block. If you happen to punch this way, you more this way. We do it off that set punch just for practice. You block here. Slide into the jaw, ear, eye area. Multiple striking if possible. Hook behind, roundhouse elbow. Notice when I do the roundhouse elbow, I pull here. This is very important, I pull here into it. So he punches. Whew. Next, if they get underneath his head, lift his head up a little bit, there's that circular punch. All the basics come together. Watch my knees, mm, the whole body. From the other side, he punches, block. Hit, I pull, watch here, watch this hand. I pull and I push, getting everything flexed across the back, and I drop. Where you drop depends on what happens next. You punch in lefty right from here, so you can see it block, I come in. Maybe that's in the eye, get the ear, the jaw area. You can go here, you can go frontal, you can go to the neck. You are responsible in the martial arts for what's going on. If I'm gonna control myself, when I'm trying to defend myself against Thomas, I gotta control him. Before I control him, I gotta control myself. So get in to really focusing your movement. Okay, that can work. You're in here, you're wrestling with somebody in here. You did one of your kicking techniques, you came in to punch him, he grabbed you, and you go right from here. Boom. You can change up. So I went to half left and half righty. That'll work. Swinging hammer is the next one. There's that cross body palm block. Come into the temple region. When you do come in, don't come totally, totally close. Just get across your center line so you can fire it out. Block, temple region. This is important. Get his whole body and head over there. So that this area, keep your hand over here. Don't strike over, strike underneath and hit. See, if Thomas gets strong and he feels the shot, it doesn't hurt that much. If I get him to tilt his head a little bit and get him over, <laughs> significant, right Thomas? Yes. So from here, block and hit and hit, watch my left foot, my left foot, this one over here. Ooh, I slide in a little extra. A lot of times that little extra quarter inch here or there, you know, when you're doing your high block, your elbow's here, your elbow's there, it means a lot. Pay attention when the instructor critiques you a half inch, quarter inch either way. You hear block, <laughs> other side. Now during this video, an instructional video, it's not designed for me to show off and do all my fancy movements and all these things, Designed to teach you the basic technique, the instructional video. As the taste progress, you see a lot more application. Mary punches, block, temple region, ribs. Now the hand is here, or it could be here. You'll know when he punches in. It's best to control the shoulder. A lot of times you hit him, you might lose him for a second, you might move. That's when you need that hand to catch back up. Thank you, Tommy. Dropping elbow and swinging hammer. Practice them lefty, practice them righty, do them on bags. Practice all the different ways, as I said before. Same as the combination. The kinds of called mushin or no mind. A lot of systems wait till higher ranks to get into the reactionary movement. 
Mushin is very simply said, little tiny steps of sparring. Let's get work on it right now. Thomas, come on out. When you're doing it, you don't have to be moving around. We want you to just get used to it. Now in the white belt video, I struck at Thomas and he blocked. And he blocked. And he blocked. From here, he strikes at me, I block, and I counter strike. Now probably by white belt, you even wanted to do the strike already. We're doing it slow, because I want you to really focus at white belt on a good block, then at yellow belt, not punching from here, but really getting a good spot, really getting in. We only ask for one strike. You might say, well, I want to do two or three. And you probably could do that. But really get into doing one really focused strike where when you block, you are this strike. Boom! Your body becomes that strike. Sometimes if you do multiple strikes in the beginning, one strike can be effective, another one isn't. So from here, he comes at me, I block, oh, one really good one. I come at Thomas, oh, oh. I come at him, oh, oh. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're going back and forth or 10 for 10. I prefer personally to do 10 for 10 because Thomas can really get into his no mind concept when you do back 10 and 10. Thank you, Thomas. So practice your no mind drill, go back and forth with your partner. If you want to see, take ideas from each other or do the 10 and 10. Okay, practice both of them. Sparring techniques, or kamite sparring, same word. When you get up high, you'll be doing a lot of these techniques with full gear on. Mouthpiece, groin protection, foot padding, hand padding, headgear. In the beginning class is a good time to start getting the pads. Right now, I'm going to be doing them without the pads because I want you to really work us on your control. Thomas, go on out. Everything's about control. Remember I said before, before I can control him in a fight, I got to be able to control myself. So when you throw your strike, good control. I just hit Thomas, but I barely touched him. Okay, when you're doing your sparring, the key considerations from the white belt video are still true. Always keep your center moving, keep switching from the left to the right, keep your knees bent, keep your head moving. A moving target is harder to hit than something standing still. Now the other video we worked on high, he blocks, and low. Now we're going to work on the other way. In fact, we might even incorporate some both, because you go both ways on these. So from here, fake low, come high. From here, Fake low, come high, or hit low, buckle them, and then hit high. So from here, you're moving around, and whoa, whoa. then you might go into you know, full techniques. So however you hit his lead leg, whether you hit his lead leg like this, and come in as a setup, hit it this way, hit his groin this way. It's just low, high. Low, high. You could also go lower on the body in a sense, go lower here and then work higher. Reverse flow. So you can come in and go one, two, and then come lower. You could be here, low, high, boom, high, low. That'd be a full sweep technique. However you do it. Let's review also the concepts from the white belt, which was the high, low. You fake high, you go low. You fake high, you go real low. It doesn't matter which way you do these concepts. You can be moving around and just be adding them all in in different ways. He comes back at me, boom, boom. You can work it where he just does it on me, boom, or you work where you're blocking. Okay? And you go back and forth. Thank you, Thomas. When you're working these, you're working with, I repeat again, with, can't stress it enough, with your partner, not against your partner. There'll be, there's a time and a place for everything. At this time in your training, you want to work with your partner. Prashing techniques. There should be no more fear of getting hurt than if you were playing basketball or volleyball or baseball. Nice focused technique. Work on those sparring concepts, the low high, and also keep working on the high low. Techniques from white belt, don't forget them. Keep practicing them all the way through. grappling skills or rendori. This is when you'll be using your self-defense skills with less punches, elbows, knees, and kicks and more body leveraging and uh, kind of general awareness of where your body is. Seth Thomas, come on out. 
Okay. You're doing it from a mat for safety. Later on, you can be doing it on your dojo floor, out in the grass, wherever it happens to be. Now, we have you from this position. Now, if we were really in the street, a lot of times grappling starts, I'm here talking to you, all of a sudden somebody grabs me. Boom. And he's got me down to the floor. I couldn't do one of my grab techniques. He got me down to the floor. Okay? We'll be doing some grab techniques in a moment. I saved those the best for last. So from here, he's got me. That's where the grappling starts. Sometimes it starts, you're fighting, and you're in here, and all of a sudden he grabs you. But let's start from any position. We do it down here. Remember, white belt was about learning your slap outs and rolls and kicks from the floor. This is doing this from here. Now, whether you're on the inside or the outside or one in one, okay, all you're going to do is if your partner is pushing you, when your instructor says, he's pushing me forward, don't let him bow you back. If somebody's pushing you, use the yin and yang concept. Pull and push. If I'm pushing Thomas very hard, remember, if we're standing up, this is actually harder to do down here on the floor. If we were standing up, it would be easier. I'm, this is for safety for you. I'm pushing him, he pulls me, and uses my power against me. Now, if you both know the concept, you're going to be fighting each other. Now, if it was a real fight, you might be kneeing each other, palming each other. But right now, it's just who can push and pull who. So we're going, and I push too hard, he uses it against me. And down I go. Doesn't really matter if you're winning or losing right away, just you understand the concept. This would not be good. I'm stronger than Thomas, I could probably just throw him right down. Yeah, it's a technique, but it's a crude one. Another one could be, I start, come over to the side a little bit, I start taking, go to take Thomas down, he starts to take me down, and I continue it and bring him over. Get the rolling effect. Watch it again. From here, I start taking Thomas down. He continues it and he rolls me over. Notice the slap out. Remember, you're working with your partner. Soon we'll get you up to here with one knee up. Then we'll get you up to here. Then we'll get you dissociated, cut off, and doing it from there. All steps. What I suggest when you're from here, wear your groin protection, wear mouthpiece, wear headgear, in case you haven't hit the floor kind of hard. When you're doing this, it can get kind of hard. Don't do this to your partner. Push me straight back. Now, I could fall and stretch this way, but not everybody can, okay? Well, sometimes people's legs get caught up in different ways. Don't do that to each other. Don't try to stretch your partner. So you just go from here, and you just do your technique. It doesn't matter which way you go. There's other techniques that you can work on where when I say go, I might pull him down and then turn him. You can be using the shoulder concept. All different things. But just try to get the general awareness right from in here. Thank you, Thomas. Our system, the main strength of our system, is all different fighting distances out far techniques, and in close techniques, and on the floor. Work all the different distances. That's the best defense. As the final physical thing we're working on today are the back grabs. Jiu-Jitsu, defense moves, some grabs, whatever you call them. Let's get started on them. Thomas, come on out. OK. Like once again, like I was talking about just before in the last section, somebody came up behind you and surprised you and grabbed you. Now, a lot of times when people grab you, there's going to be movement involved. You do not have to remember the, the reactionary part of our system, the knives, clubs, guns, grab techniques, jujitsu on the floor, you know, grapple techniques, sparring techniques. As such, you can always kind of adapt and move with them and change them up. Because if I show you one technique where you're standing still and all of a sudden the guy bangs into you and moves you forward two feet, or he pulls you this way, or he's yanking you side to side, that's going to change the technique. So that's the reactionary part of our system, the yin, the yang. You have the forms, kempos, and combos that are the set technique, the reactionary is everything else in between. Somebody comes up behind you and grabs you from the back. The most important thing to do when you get grabbed from the back is breathe in, round out your shoulders, and stick out your butt a little bit. He grabs you, right from there. 
That's the first most important thing. I'm talking and I'm up and right here like this. I could be watching the trees and all of a sudden, first thing I do is I stop talking, round out the shoulders, stick your butt out, get a really good technique in. From here, doesn't matter what you do. That's the most important thing. Watch it very closely. This posture, this position. He grabs me. Now, let's say I do a simple technique such as the back rising heel kick. He might have moved me two feet forward. I might do a back kick instead. That's the, the, very, that's the beauty of our system. So for me, he grabs me. Maybe I latch on a little bit. When I bring my arms up, don't bring your arms up too far because if you keep pulling back, now you put yourself in a worse position. Just round up like you're making muscles. So from here, he grabs me. Now, back rising heel kick. Back kick. Back elbow. That doesn't matter. Just get him stunned. Grab him. Go down to your knee, like the forward roll. Roll. It doesn't matter what you do. But get that elbow in. That elbow is the first most important thing. Watch it again. From here, let's go on this side. I'm walking, I'm minding my own business. See, I stop talking immediately. Reflex. I can go right there and go into it. Or there, or there. Use all three or any combination thereof. Go into a roll. When I roll, I pull, turn, or two, or run. It doesn't matter. Many times when I turn to a person, I like to get my elbow into the head, controlling the head region and striking. Practice the technique over and over, back and forth with your partner. It's also good practice for me, because as Thomas does the technique on me, I get to work on my roll and slap out. It's always practice. Even if I'm just punching in for Thomas, it's practice for me, developing a good punch, good focus, and exhaling. Another technique, and your instructor can give you hundreds of these. Hey, grab from the back. Doesn't matter what you do, he, he's, he's moving you from side to side. You sneak an elbow in one way and another way. It might be possible you might be able to step behind him and flip him and go. There's so many. Let me show that to you again from another side. He's here, and I whip this way, he brings me back which way? And I sneak my elbow in. Another one. Maybe I only get my foot in front and flip him over and kick him. Doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get it done. Another one that you can do is you can get grabbed from the back. I can be looking over here, talking with somebody, how's it going, all of a sudden I get grabbed from the back. Back kick. Reach around, back to your knuckle. Palm strike. Come in, throw him, and then I run. Okay, watch it again. He grabs me. Back kick. Reach for the stars, wrap around. Back to your knuckle. Palm strike. Doesn't matter what I do. And I drop him down to the ground and I run away. Thank you, Thomas. When you're doing your techniques, you can add things to those, you can subtract things, something feels comfortable. Whatever way, when you're working with somebody, make sure the technique works on them. Be varied, have fun, explore. You should enjoy the process of your training. I like to work on something called three-step breathing with tension release. Each rank we have you working on something. A white belt video, which is a deep rhythmic breathing. Breathing in through your nose, holding it for a count of five, exhaling for a count of five, out through your mouth. Just build upon that. Whether you're kneeling or sitting, or you can be lying completely down. I'll do it from this position so that you can see me and hear me a little bit better. From here, I want you to breathe in through your nose, let it come out to your abdomen. When you're holding it, I want you to scrunch up your toes on both sides and hold it for that count of five. And then when you exhale, breathe out and let everything relax, especially that area that we just had tense. And just picture everything's draining out from the bottom of your feet or just out through the down part of your body. So breathe in. You're tensing now, then exhale. And if you do it with your toes, try to do it with the soles of your feet. Then try to do it with your calf, your, your ankles. 
then your calves, the muscles around your knees, then your thighs, and your inner muscles, your rear end, your lower back, your middle back, your upper back, your stomach, middle, upper, chest, fingers, forearms, top of the arms, biceps, triceps, neck, even go so far, you might want to do this when you're alone, tense up your face in a few different spots. It, could be, it might look funny, it might look like this, like this. Tensing in your face, making kind of like frowns and whatnot, tensing up all the muscles in your face when you do that. It'll take you a long time to go from your toes to your eyebrows. But when you do that, you should be completely relaxed. Your body will be very warm and very heavy because you've been breathing in, holding and tensing, and then relaxing and letting flow. It is a great thing to do. Many times when I do that, I can see a certain part of my body that I've been working too much. Maybe I need to stretch it more, condition it more. Maybe I injured it, I need to know I take it easy. It's a good way of kind of doing like a diagnostic uh, kind of tune-up test on your body to see where you're at. Do it slowly. You can do, it's not so far as meditation, it's more just a, a tension stress control technique. Work on it, do the white belt technique, just work on breathing. Yellow belts, work on this. If each rank, you spend a couple of months working each one, by the time we get up high and get into internal body techniques of con uh, using your chi to help your mind and body, it'll seem very easy. So once again, breathe in, then you're tensing, and then exhaling and relaxing. Certain parts, you might not be able to feel you can control at first. Change your body position. Or this way, just don't fall asleep. At first, if you can't control a certain body muscle group by isolating it, keep doing it. You will be able to do it. There were certain areas that I couldn't do at first, and now it comes quite easy. Remember, the whole thing about martial arts, somebody tries to hurt us, we got to be able to control them. Before we can control them, we have to be able to control us. And finally, I'd like to speak about a book called Living the Marsh Away by a gentleman named Forrest Morgan. He's a retired uh, Air Force captain, I believe. It's a very good book. It'll put your mind in the mental mindset of where it should be in your training. Everything from bowing to proper respect for your fellow students, respect for the art, instructors. It's a very good book. I can go on and on for about an hour. I think after you read that book, you'll appreciate the martial art mindset and it'll help you get there. And when your instructor talks about mind concepts like mushin or sanchin or respect or things of that nature, you'll understand more what he's talking about. Hope you enjoyed watching the Elba video. I enjoyed working with you. We had a beautiful day. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Thomas for coming out and helping us out today. Practice. Do all the techniques slowly. Speed and power will come with your techniques. Thank you.